Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of the My Tech Story Africa podcast. My name is Alice Kanjejo, your lovely host, and also your guide as we delve into the dynamic narratives shaping the African tech landscape. In today's episode, we are having a conversation with Kimtai Kiprotich, a dedicated software developer at the Open Institute. Kimtai unveiled his progression from exploring diverse fields post high school to the pivotal discovery of programming during his university days. While pursuing his studies, he honed his skills through Moringa School and boot camps like Microverse, which played a role in transforming his programming approach. Moringa wasn't that difficult because we had done some bit of the concept. Mm-hmm. So it was just uh, making us better because we were teaching others how to do things. Uh, balancing Moringa School with university studies posed challenges, highlighting the role of self-teaching in consolidating his programming understanding. A captivating segment in the episode it delves into Kim Tai's hackathon journey with his friend Michael, who was also our previous guest on this podcast. Together, this powerful duo has won over 10 hackathons and counting. Looking ahead, Kim Tai expresses ambitions to continue learning, innovate, and explore entrepreneurial opportunities, specifically his venture, Campus Tab. As an exemplar of diversity in the tech sector, Kim Tai encourages aspirants to embrace unique journeys, build publicly, and persistently push forward. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed having Kim Tai on. Without further ado, let's get into it. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of the My Tech Story Africa podcast. Today, we are continuing the Moringa series that we've been having for this season. If you haven't yet tuned into the previous episodes, we had Claire and Michael share their amazing stories to get to where they are in their journeys. So this is a call for you to tune in and keep tabs on what's been happening on the My Tech Story Africa podcast. But interestingly enough, if you've been listening keenly on each and every one of the episodes, or at least some of them, you've noticed that on this this podcast we are very keen on having the powerful duos and what i mean by this is that one individual story feeding into another and today is one of those kind of formats that we are having we had michael who had joined us and told us about his story to his journey into winning over 10 hackathons with his teammate kim who is also here joining us and you shall get the full gist of the story once we start having a conversation with him so i urge you to first tune into the previous episode where we had uh, Michael share his story so that you can get the full scope of what this journey really is. So without further ado, Kim, I'm going to give you the opportunity to introduce yourself to our audience. Okay, I'm Kipratich Kimutai, a software developer at the Open Institute and a student at Dumokenta University of Agriculture and Technology. I have over three experience uh, in software development and building solutions. I love solving problems. I have I have tried developing two two startups. Uh, we're still working on one, and one is on hold for now. I can see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for gracing our podcast with your presence, and I'm very looking, very much looking forward to hearing about your journey. Mm. And I think this is the cue for us to do exactly that. So, Kim, tell us about your journey, where it began. What did you always have an interest in tech, or what did you aspire to be as a kid? Where did your story begin? Okay, my story began after high school. So I had gotten my grades, I had passed, then I didn't know what to do then. So in Kenya, as usual, when you pass your exams, your parents want you to do medicine, everyone (laughs) wants you to do medicine. (laughs) But I didn't really want to do medicine. So I went out there, researched, I almost landed into electrical engineering, civil, I considered civil. Yeah, dental surgery was also... (laughs) Dental (laughs) surgery. I was was almost convinced (laughs) because I was told money money is there. Money is there. Yeah. (laughs) But later on, I just decided to change to telecommunication and information engineering because I I knew someone who was doing it and it was I just wanted an engineering course that had some bit of IT mm-hmm. yeah because based on my research I I just did salary ranges, the normal research. <laughs> the normal that, research yeah, that, that everyone does. does. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I found out about telecommunication information engineering and my sister's friend was doing it at JCOT. So I contacted him. We had a chat then. I had made my decision, but I didn't tell my dad. Mm-hmm. 
So I just applied, I think it was on, on the deadline. I just changed everything to telecommunication information engineering. Yeah, then... Why didn't you tell your dad at that time that you want to pursue this? Because he didn't want me to go to the court. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he would not agree, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I think he had your N in his mind, the oh, best university in, yes, in, in Kenya. Yes, in Kenya. Yeah. Presumably. Yeah. <laughs> so after I was called there, then when I joined, I had this one friend. So I went there, talked with him, asked him what I can do or what, how has the course been. Then he told me that you need to do something so that you can you can put yourself at a better position of getting a job because I remember he was going for an internship back then but he didn't have it was difficult for him to get an internship because he told me he didn't do other stuff apart from the school things Mm. so he told me find something to do it can be programming it can be networking so because telecommunication is closer to networking I decided to try networking Mm. so I think it was around that time that I met with Mike. I, I remember my first encounter with Mike was uh, we were waiting for a certain exam and we were told to write reports. I think it was a 15 page, page report about an, a lab that he had done. And this guy had written, uh, I think he had written 15 pages, yes, but half, <laughs> half, <laughs> half a page each. <laughs> Seems <laughs> like something he would do. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Then uh, we started talking from there. I told him that I'm going to start my networking classes in JQuart. So we started together. We did the configuring routers stuff. Yeah. It was basic networking back then. Then we didn't even do the CCNA exams. So after that, we decided to I decided to explore programming. More. So I asked my sister, why can I learn programming? Then she told me that you can go to Moringa School and she knows someone who's in Moringa School. Bef- so it, before you go any further, yeah. um, what was it about? So you had started doing networking and yeah. how long did you do that before you made the decision that, okay, maybe I need to now do programming to add into this? For, um, for a whole sem. I just You're saying a whole sem is three months? Yeah, yeah. For, yeah, for three months, basically yeah. three months. But we were being taught mm-hmm. by a lecturer in GQuart. Mm-hmm. Then we would do the labs, then go back. So you're supposed to do, I had actually finished the classwork. Mm-hmm. So I was supposed to do the certification exams. Mm. But I wanted to experience programming first. So I had done a bit, but not actually seriously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's how I went to research on how I can start learning programming and when you started doing the course did you start feeling like okay this is definitely a path i'm really interested in and and want to pursue quite seriously as a career because you had mentioned previously that you didn't really know what you wanted to do yeah so that was the time you also decided okay this is definitely something and did you decide that based off based off the conversation we had with mike his his goal was the money so were you in the same mentality or did you have somewhat some passion for it the the, the mentality was this will make us get a job easily yeah okay so we didn't want a situation where you finish campus then you don't have a job yeah yeah because a lot of students i think that's very interesting because a lot of students um or a good chunk of them usually you still go with the mentality that you had in high school that okay it's just about finishing these papers and then the job will figure that out later but i think the best route is always while you're there then thinking about okay post this uni thing what are we gonna do in our career and then taking initiative to create opportunities for yourself whilst you're still in uni and that's what i would like to say makes the difference um within the powerful students and people who are just there to be in class i don't think if you perform the best in uni means that translates to you being the best in the corporate world so mm. i'm very happy to hear that you guys were already just saying okay how can we take initiative and do this figure this programming thing out but before you also move forward where mm. in this story did now you present to your dad that okay we are no longer doing this and we're going to jay and, and no, what was the reaction he, I, I told him that i was called to jay then he just said your sister lied to you, <laughs> but it's okay. He just said it's fine. I'll just support you. Mm. You just 
Do your best. Do your best. Okay. As long as you're yeah. not drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and while you're drinking. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> There's someone said I hear here in the audience, but <laughs> I'll believe you for now. <laughs> okay, so now you're looking into programming. You've heard about Moringa. Tell us from there. So I told Mike about it. Then we applied. I remember it was 14th June. Wow. 2021. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's when he started uh, Moringa, the prep program. So then we did it for five weeks. It was tiring, mm-hmm. but. Uh, it was tiring, so we decided to take a break so that we can continue, continue with school. school. Yeah. And what does the prep program entail, really? It had the basics of programming, HTML, CSS, and okay. a bit of JavaScript. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just got introduced into programming. So from there, is in phase two is where you go into deep things. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, so then you made the decision that you need to take a break so that you can yeah, focus on uni. I actually wanted to continue, but Mike didn't want to continue. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he just decided, let's take a break, then we can continue in the next long holiday. Mm-hmm. But actually, somewhere in November, I remember I, I considered continuing, continuing with Moringa. I actually applied for it, but... I didn't tell my dad earlier, so I had I just had to wait for the next year. But mm. meanwhile, I was actually exploring some bit of concepts. I had bought some Udemy courses mm-hmm. here and there on Python, especially Django, because I remember I explored Django before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Django is just a technology. Let me let me not be too technical. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, it's okay. But, People who listen to this podcast are probably technical anyway, so feel yeah, free. Yeah, yeah. So I did a bit of that, but I didn't have a proper structure. It was just here and there, mm-hmm. and I, or rather, I felt I wasn't getting any better, mm-hmm. and I wasn't consistent. I would do it today. The next time I do it is after two weeks, after one week. Mm-hmm. So I decided to go online, look for these boot camps that are remote. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's how I came across Microverse, mm-hmm. and I applied for it. I was accepted. Oh, also, this is the one that Mike what, didn't apply for. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. He applied for it, but after me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I applied for it. I got it. Then I was to start January third, I think. Mm-hmm. So you're very particular about these yeah, dates. Yeah, I remember the dates. <laughs> I remember the dates. Mm-hmm. So I started. Uh, we had had these conversations. Then he decided that we could do it at night. Then during the day, we could do the normal day mm-hmm. classes. Could you just confirm the time frames that at night was from 5 p.m. to 15 a.m. Wow. <laughs> so Jay Quat, you're doing eight to five, and yeah. then from there you go ahead and yeah. do this. Yeah, mm-hmm. we thought. Okay, or rather, I thought I could do that, but after one week. I felt burnt out. I I wasn't able to get the concepts. They were difficult. I felt that it was a big transition, actually. So I decided to quit without telling him because I knew he would find a way to convince me yeah. to remain there. Mm-hmm. But I, I I just sent them the email, then I showed them the email that I have quit. I'm, I'm gathering that this is a habit that you may be having for telling people information later. <laughs> yeah, because, <laughs> because someone can convince you to remain there and you don't want to be there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I made that decision then. He convinced me to come back with him the next Which month. Which you are avoiding, but here we are. Yeah, yeah. He convinced me to come back with him. Then after that, he told me that if you won't be able to do it, it's fine. We'll just leave it. So we came back the next month. We did it together. We were, we, we were collaborating well. We were helping each other. We were able to push through it for another three months. Then we decided to rejoin Moringa when we were on, on holidays. So there was a time we were doing actually the two boot camps at the same time. At the same time. Yeah. What, what was that like? Did you experience burnout? Did you have a social life? Or it was COVID time, so socializing was not really a thing? <laughs> it wasn't COVID time. It wasn't really. COVID time. So yeah. like, how was that experience, you know, that we do It was difficult. We didn't have... That's when our social life went down, down, down. Mm-hmm. And he also stopped doing magic Oh. Yeah, he also stopped going out <laughs> and doing the magic tricks. Yeah, but Moringa wasn't that difficult because we had 
done some bit of the concept mm-hmm. so it was just uh making us better because we were teaching others how to do things uh, yeah i think when, yeah. when you actually have to teach people it also yeah. pushes you to become better so that other people can look up to you for that and, and it also advice. motivates you because you actually it's when you teach someone that is when you teach someone you i you know that you know something mm, or you have exactly. understood the concept yeah yeah Okay, so would you say you were a good teacher to your students? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get reviews that were telling you? Yeah, I still I still teach people up to now. Oh, you still teach people. That's yeah. so nice. I think that's uh that's something that shows like, you know, not only that you're passionate about this, but you know, you're also pushing other people to be passionate about this and I think anything that allows other people to get into the tech space and be the best version of themselves there i'm 100% on board with okay yeah. so now you're double dealing and then what was next after that uh what was next is we finished microverse and immediately after that uh i saw this my aunt sent me a post of a hackathon at mm-hmm. valley chain factory mm-hmm. and i remember in my first year forgot to say this in my first year i went for a networking event at mm-hmm. ihub mm-hmm. and i met someone so this person was working for valley chain factory mm-hmm. so i just took his contact then we never talked up to the time that i got this poster then i remembered this guy works there yeah. so i can contact him mm-hmm. so i contacted him then i asked uh what 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 will be the themes or something i just wanted to get some few clues information uh, some information about the hackathon but it it was actually pushed to a later date then he told me the date he didn't give me any information but i think it was a general hackathon mm-hmm. so uh we went there i actually applied michael forgot to apply or something i think he <laughs> he gave the story of how that happened yeah but yeah, he, he said he mentioned that he assumed that one person applying or invent that he was going to be your teammate yeah we are actually supposed to submit an idea but our idea was not selected oh oh yeah. so it wasn't selected yeah. and then how did you manage to maneuver that no you are supposed to go whether your idea was selected or not oh, okay yeah mm-hmm. so we just went there then you waited for someone to pitch a nice idea then you could join the team mm. but for us it was a challenge i think we are the second cohort from moringa uh we are the second people that did the moringa flatiron program mm-hmm. so we we knew that in kenya we could not find ruby and rails developers so we had to sit there and wait for someone who does ruby and rails so that we can form a team together and we got some other some other guys that were also in microverse they mm-hmm. were two Uh, so we formed a team together. Okay. Yeah. So we were all Microverse students in that mm-hmm. group. Mm-hmm. Then we did the project. We were able to win the hackathon. Yeah, that's actually the first money that I made in tech. And how did what was that feeling of It felt nice because we given that the money on that day <laughs> that evening. Yeah, I mean, it was on that evening. Yeah. I mean, okay, apart from the monetary value, yeah. like did you feel that wow, something that I put my passion in, it actually paid off and you know, is that something that you felt really proud of for that accomplishment? Yeah, it felt really nice because it was we had worked really hard for seven months or it was eight months. Mm. Yeah, so it was it actually gave us the confidence that what you're doing will actually work. At some point. At some point. Yeah. And the motivation to keep going. Yeah. Okay. And to go for more hackathons. And to go for more hackathons, <laughs> it seems. Yeah. Okay. And then, so after you've done this hackathon, what was next? I mean, you still had uni on going. I'm assuming yeah, now uni started taking, uh, started st- started going on because you had mentioned that you had taken a break from uni for the long holidays, and then now you're back. Yeah. So what was next to your journey? Uh, the next part. is we we all, we went to another hackathon organized by the Open Institute it was we still submitted the same idea but mm-hmm. we just had made improvements of uh, the so idea. now you you've now seen that this idea is what's going to yeah. keep i mean that's a smart way to look at it to be honest if it worked for this previous hackathon it probably might work for this next one yeah okay so we submitted the idea it was selected i remember in that hackathon we had three teams so they had already selected the ideas before we went there mm-hmm. and uh we we also won that one and that's how i got this job 
that I'm doing. Which is? I'm actually I'm a software consist software designer at the Open Institute. We are actually working on a research project funded by Welcome Trust on digital health. It's called regulating the migration of uh, digital health in sub-Saharan Africa. And what does that entail, if I ask? Okay, it entails you are building a solution mm -hmm. for community health workers to mm -hmm. help them uh, advise patients with sickle cell disease better mm -hmm. on how they can do things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So something you've not mentioned that Mike did is that you went ahead to win about nine to ten hackathons. Yeah, that was this after. Journey. I think that, that was, was after. the second hackathon. Mm. Then we continued with other hackathons, hackathons. For the next year. Yeah. Including, including the one that we had to push the door open. Yeah, I, I just also <laughs> want to hear your side of the story about that particular hackathon. What yeah. really happened from your perspective? From my perspective, uh, it it was really difficult because we had we had we had the other team from the other hackathon. Mm -hmm. So we had come up with an idea. I think Michael Michael was the one who came, who came up with this idea, but we also had another idea from our usual teammates. Mm -hmm. So the uh, Michael pitched the idea to us, uh, but some guys refused. I accepted. Then the other guys also pitched the the idea to us. Then that's when we decided to do the two projects separately. separately. Yeah. So. We sat down, we worked on it for a week, but it wasn't selected. So we told ourselves we can't just stay and we have done all this. Mm. It's better, it, it would be better for us to go than if you wouldn't be letting, you can just yeah. go back home. We can take hot dog from Quick Mart, <laughs> then go back home. <laughs> I remember they were opening, uh, I think it was the Quick Mart at Lavington or something. It was being opened that day. So mm -hmm. while we were passing there, we were saying that if we will get rejected, we'll just come At back here. At least you come yeah. out with a hot dog. Yeah, it gets <laughs> offers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so you go there and then these guys are like... So you went with Michael's story of we didn't get an email. Yeah, we were together at the door, but we were actually surprised because we found a list there. So <laughs> the watchman told us, uh, look for your name, sign, then go in. And your names were not there. So yeah. how did you manage to get through that first check? We just stopped there. Then uh, I think what also helped us is Michael had contacted someone the previous day mm -hmm. about the hackathon. Mm -hmm. So I think that person remembered Michael. Mm -hmm. So when he came there, he remembered him. Then he told him, I think we talked yesterday. Mm -hmm. So he asked us the problem. Then he told him that we are not on the list and we didn't get the rejection email. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, so he told us, uh, wait a minute, then he went inside, called the communications team or something, then we talked there, then they said, you can just go in, but uh, we'll let you in if one of the teams don't come. And one of the teams didn't yeah, come. Yeah, they didn't come. Wow, that that is so, a stroke of luck. Yeah, and I think that also pushed us to do better because uh, Michael was saying that we have to win this Yeah. because... I like in a car back though. Yes. Mm, I yeah, mean, so. yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we had to win it. No, but I also just mentioned this in Michael's episode where I, I just really ac appreciate the the drive that you guys had for even receiving a rejection email. Normally, you guys would just be like, oh, I wasn't selected. Okay, let's move on to the next thing. But you guys said, we need to reach the location for that physical rejection. If we need to cook lives, we are going to do them, but we need to get in, into this thing. Yeah. And I think that's very admirable. And it's also a call for you guys to really, the audience that is, to really just go for exactly what you want. Even with the rejection, you need to make sure it's the final rejection before you, you say, okay, it's our hands down this is not happening yeah so i really admire that about you guys okay so you've done this hackathons and you've been successful at them and actually remember one hackathon mm -hmm. before you proceed no worries uh we were at school and it was i think a week or three or four days to exams mm -hmm. then my friend came and showed and he showed me uh, a poster mm -hmm. i think it was a hackathon in eldoret mm -hmm. and i'm from eldoret so I called Michael, then I told him we should apply for this. 
Mm-hmm. I think it was it was on Thursday and the mm-hmm. hackathon was on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So that means we had to travel to to Eldoret on Friday. On Friday. Mm-hmm. So I told Michael then Michael complained about the exams but I told him let's just go. And you guys ended up going. Yeah, and you went to Eldoret. Wow, and did you guys win that hackathon? Yeah. Wow. Actually, we actually split the two solutions. I pitched one, he ah, pitched the other one. You guys really... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything to get in or to get the bag. And I love no, that. Oh, wow. Zotembili Mlishinda. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, so guys, if you're looking to get into hackathons, you should probably reach out to these guys because they know what they're doing and they've had over enough experience to give you a bit of advice so if you want to reach out to them i think we leave their linkedin profiles or their twitter they said they're the most active there for you to reach out and get more information about how you too can become a guru in this hackathon experiences and so are you guys looking to apply for other hackathons anytime soon and before you answer that question i will let me just throw in another one and you can answer them uh concurrently Why are you guys doing well at school with all this happening? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> nice. I, I'm not sure because I haven't been looking at other guys' results, mm-hmm. but it was no, pretty good. You. Yeah, it was mm. pretty good. It was really, really nice. Wow. So you you figured out a way to create a balance for yeah. you and yourself. And do you think that the experience that you've had over these years of constantly trying to do these hackathons and programming and bettering yourself through the Moringa programs and, and teaching people. Do you think that made your life easier when it comes to translating things in university? Yeah, it made my life easier because when you do, when you do, when you're doing something else, uh, you have to utilize the little time that you have, for mm-hmm. example, at school. So when you go to classes, you have to make use of that two hours. So you just mm-hmm. have to concentrate. Mm-hmm. take notes yeah and of course uh, at school you can always read towards the exams and you still <laughs> and you still pass i mean you can't always this is for the smart kids who understand <laughs> things quick but i was asking that question because just trying to, sorry trying to relate it to my personal experience is that um Maybe it's a bit different because of the difference in courses, but what I was going to say is I was doing communications, but at the same time, you know, podcasting and media has always just been a passion of mine. And so because I was getting that work experience from this projects, personal projects that I was doing, it was easier to apply those things that I'm learning from my personal experiences at school. And that just made it easier for me to pass um, the exam. So I was just curious to see if that was also the same for you guys or for you in particular or would you say that your school what you were learning in school was completely different from what you were doing it was, it was somehow different you were somehow different yeah, yeah because it wasn't directly correlated to programming but there are some units which are related mm. somehow okay so right now mm-hmm. what do you see yourself pursuing in the future what ambition do you have for yourself with regards to the tech industry, do you see yourself staying here in a long time? Do you have particular ideas or products that you think you want to really prioritize? You know, are you looking to graduate or are you just going to keep doing projects and going ahead? Because there's this analogy that, you know, in the tech industry, especially that you don't really have to finish school for you to be successful in this space. So what do you see yourself in the future? I think I'd wish to finish school. I Mm -hmm. think I will finish school. Yeah. And I'm also pushing for, I, I can see that I have a particular project in mind apart from the startup that we are trying to build. Mm-hmm. But uh, we usually have different ideas at different times. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, the DJ one, we just came up with the you idea. Which DJ one? Some people okay. are listening to this episode and okay. didn't listen uh, to my Mike, Mike had talked about uh, a, a project that we had built for DJs, or, or actually, or rather we are building mm-hmm. for DJs where you can, let, let me let me say, bid for songs at mm. clubs or at events. Mm-hmm. Instead of just Kupatia DJ, yeah. something small. Yeah, so we have, we have different ideas at different times. Uh, right now we are trying to venture into more of ticketing for events or for football clubs. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's the solution that, that we are building right now, but we are open to... We, we always have ideas at you different times. Ideas. And yeah. I mean, have you thought about 
creating products and then kind of selling them to other people? Is that something you've done before or are you looking to open to having, you know, doing? Yeah, we we can do that. The way we have been doing them is uh, we are just building systems for organizations mm. or different clients okay. or building for them their websites or their landing pages. So, oh, so like yeah, freelancing. But, yeah, but mm-hmm. right now we are moving more into systems, into bigger systems that can handle payments, that can handle, for example, like the ticketing system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot to be... Of course, I'm biased because I work for a fintech, but there's a lot to explore in terms of... Um, uh, creating better financial systems, especially in Africa. Yeah. And so if that's a space you're looking to venture a hundred percent, I think you should go for it because there's a lot of work to be done in the tech space across Africa on that front. And I am wishing you nothing but the best towards your journey as you keep elevating, keep building more products, keep building more ideas. I think what, what has been driving you and what will keep driving you guys is in your journey is that it, uh, that ability to always constantly think of new ideas and concepts because ideas don't just come to everybody, I think. So uh, for you guys to be able to have that on, on your bag as well as your drive to get things done, whether they are straightforward or it's like a maze, I think you guys have managed to maneuver through those experiences and get out of the other end successful. And I think that is something that will keep happening. And if you're listening to this podcast and you need some help from some people who are passionate and building great things across not just Kenya, but across the board, uh, feel free to reach out to them, like I mentioned. And I think my last question to you as we close off this episode is what could you say you can attribute to the experience that you had here at Moringa? Uh, I can see the opportunities mm. that they are giving us. Yeah. For example, the hackathons, they usually send uh, job applications or they link us to jobs. For example, my, my email is, my Moringa School email is full with the outcomes team mm. uh, emails because they usually send the opportunities every time. Yeah. There are some hackathons we've gotten from Moringa School. And also, I can say the community because we have a community of developers. So uh, when I need help with something, I can reach Always out to reach someone. Out to people. Yeah, because as developers, we need to work together because yeah. you can't always know everything. Exactly. So you have to ask. Yeah, you can get mentorship from the TMs mm. because you still have their contacts and they know you because you, you interact with them. Yeah, so you can always ask anything you want. Yeah. But mainly the opportunities. The opportunities that they present to you. Yeah. Okay, I really like that because in um, working together is the only way that we can tackle building the tech space across the continent and not only that and having communities like Moringa or institutions that really do push people to do things and be greater and build that community of people is very essential because there's so many schools and even universities and maybe you had this kind of experience while you were in uni of you're just in school because you're in school and whether you come to classes whether you do your thing it doesn't matter because you've paid for this so Mm -hmm. there's that that's that but institutions that really take prior that prioritize really pushing their students to become better and when i had conversations with uh, claire she mentioned that the the people who are looking to get into the job market you know 70 percent of them have become successful doing that i think for me it's something that really solidifies a really good institution and separates it from an institution that isn't that great so i can also add something about that yeah mm-hmm. uh on the job market uh, nowadays it's 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 somewhat difficult to get the job so the best thing to do is to get yourself out of there mm-hmm. because uh, you'll always get these rejection emails i can talk about one of my experiences uh, i had applied for a job the company which we won the hackathon the first hackathon mm-hmm. then it was called there for an interview no the valid in fact okay and, mm-hmm. yeah you went there for an interview then uh i showed them one of our product one of our projects then they found so many security vulnerabilities mm-hmm. so well, the moment I, read, I I got out of the interview room, I just knew that you're not getting this yeah, job. Okay, man, that too. Mm, and <laughs> how did you how do you handle rejection? I feel a lot of people also struggle with that, you know. So how how did you how have you guys managed to really just okay, we've got rejected, let's move to the next one. 
I, I remember I just took a walk. Then I called Michael. Then I told him that because I felt that in a way I was not growing that much. He started this policy where build a project every week. Let's start building projects every week. So I went back. Right now I know why I failed the interview. And we, I just went back. Then I sat down. Then we decided that we'd be building projects every week. Mm. It, then we would, we would post them on Twitter. So it, we continued it that way. I That's an event I did into Python more and AI stuff, which I'm actually doing where I work right now. Yeah, but that was more of a lesson to me because I knew what I'm supposed to do and what I'm not supposed to do and mm-hmm. how I can make myself better. Yeah. But I took it as a, a motivating factor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not really a rejection. A rejection. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I really admire that, that mentality because I think uh, when you get... A certain amount of rejections i think people get that like oh, okay maybe i'm not good at this thing and i should try something different but for me i i, be, I strongly believe in do it upset even if it's not worked out it's okay just do a person do a project that then can lead you to understand the mistakes that you made and keep pushing and not you take this rejection as something that is all is about you and you're not good enough it's just something that should push you to be a better person in your craft and even if you're doing it upset just as long as you're doing it i do believe that eventually something's gonna pay off yeah. so i really admire that attribute that you and michael have had and i think i also asked michael this similar question but what is it that you've mentioned that you've been together from the first time that you met in class in jquat mm-hmm. what is it about him that has made you really still stick by him and still do projects with him throughout your journey and continue doing so uh, one thing that I can say has kept me uh, close is he, okay, he thinks about things differently because when you come up with an idea, for example, for me, I can just have this idea, but I won't work, work on it immediately. Mm-hmm. But for him, he'll start it immediately. So mm-hmm. it's like he's pushing me to do these things, mm-hmm. to go build it. Once we have it, we won't procrastinate it. We'll just start it immediately. Mm. And then he keeps me accountable because uh, when I feel like, for example, the microverse story, mm-hmm. I felt like quitting, but he was the one who made me go back for the second time. And we, and you finished it. Yeah, and we finished it together. Yeah, and we have that chemistry. We can work together well. Okay. I really appreciate that because friendship is also just at its core supposed to be exactly that, just something that builds you and motivates you to be a better person. And I'm very happy that you have to have, you've had that in your life because not everyone has the privilege to, you know, work side by side by their friend who has a similar interest to you. So I really admire that friendship that both of you have. And I, I can't wait to see how you two progress in your journeys and you can come back on this platform and two, three years later and tell us how life has progressed because I'm definitely sure you'll be in a better place in even in places that maybe you couldn't have imagined right now. So yeah. I can't wait to see that progression that you guys make. Yeah. yeah. Okay, guys, I think we've covered an, uh, enough ground to say that this has been such a fulfilling episode. Before we close off the episode, I'd like to ask you some questions that I always ask my guests at the end of every episode. Yeah. The first one I have for you is what's one word to describe the journey to get to where you are today and why? I can say interesting. Interesting. Because, yeah, because we have been through a lot through these experiences of pushing through closed doors, mm-hmm. of doing, uh, developing solutions for people, which I find interesting. It's just nice to see your work out there, to see people using what you yeah, built. what you've been building. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what, do you have any regrets or things that you wish you did differently throughout your journey? I don't know whether it's a regret, but I, I always think that if I, if I, if I did computer science, I would be finishing school this year. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so but, maybe you wish you would have done a course, yeah. a different course than what you're pursuing right now. Yeah, but but so far this course has been nice because I have made 
uh, friends who have helped me reach here, the opportunities. Yeah, I think if Kama Singe Fanya telecommunication Singe meet na Michael mm-hmm. and it's I couldn't so be here. Yeah, everything yeah, so happens for a reason. Blessing, yeah. It's a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Okay, and the last one I have for you is what advice do you have for anybody who's aspiring to get to where you are today? Uh, to to be I can just say shameless. <laughs> to be shameless. Okay. Yeah, just push through, close the doors and uh, continue building. You'll get rejections or at first it would be difficult, but just continue building and uh, make networks out there. Uh, connect with people, talk with people, ask questions where you you don't understand. Yeah. And just, I can say the other thing is build publicly build publicly yeah yes it's i important. love that i love that and i always refer to this because we had a guest on this podcast who said you can be an introvert but hey you can be an introvert but never be an introvert about your career yeah and i still hold that dearly to this day because i mean i mean you're not doing it silently you're on the mighty story africa podcast so you're definitely building loudly yeah. <laughs> and I, that's... I usually tell people that no one will know what you're doing if you're not posting it mm. you might have the greatest idea ever but no one has seen it so how will we know it exists exactly yeah Yeah, i think that's my biggest takeaway is you need to do you need to build publicly yeah okay thank you so much for allowing us to share your story on this platform and it's been an absolute honor to hear your story and i hope you've enjoyed being here as well it's been really interesting okay and as a close of the episode, I hope you've enjoyed this story. If you've reached this far, it's a call for you to subscribe from wherever you're listening from, whether that's on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or any other major listening platforms. You can also join our MTS community through our website, mtsafrica.co. And by joining our community, you can get to let know about the latest news that's happening across the tech landscape across the continent, as well as just keep keep tabs on what's happening in my tech story Africa as a brand. It's been an absolute honor to have you, Kim, on the podcast. And guys, I shall see you in the next one.